All right, okay, let's start. So again, good morning. So welcome to our um, week 13, Anisha, no? Week 13 synchronous meeting. So how was your week? Kumusta man ang mga class kwela diha? I see here that you guys already answered your learning guide, uh, learning guides for this week. Especially katong um, assessment, which is at NASA 3.3 Navigate and I also received um, a couple of inquiries like or clarifications regarding the activity um, how do you find the learning guide for this week? okay ra? confusing sa pag graph sa demand supply to get the equilibrium do you have any confusions or anything? Okay, may commentary. Sa Cecilia, sir, medyo libog ang equilibrium. Same kay Tad, medyo libog daw. Sige. Alright, so for today, I'll be discussing market equilibrium, to mga policies na ginahimong sa government to control the prices, and then if napatay time, uh, makuha na to ang Shift. <laughs> uh, it's a can't put. Medyo confused siya. Same si Tad. I know. Si Tad ko na Okay. See. So, we will discuss market equilibrium today. Let me just present my PowerPoint. And if you have any questions, guys, you can turn on your mic, ha? Just interrupt me, kaya para maklaro na to. Yung mga mga pangutana. Okay, please pin my video. Mapin ninyo. Makita ninyo, market equilibrium. Okay, dili siya blur or choppy. Para ma-adjust na po ako ang settings. Okay, ra? Okay, very good. Okay, so market equilibrium. So last two weeks, uh, we're able to complete uh, the concept of law of demand, which is on the consumer side, and then law of supply, which is on uh, the supplier side. Now, today we'll be focusing on market equilibrium. So when we say equilibrium, it's it means balance, right? So when we add market, meaning there's a balance in the market. So, unsa man siya nga balance? So, market equilibrium occurs in a market. So, here, when all buyers and sellers agreed with the price and the quantity in the market. Okay, so in other words, we can achieve market equilibrium if your quantity demand is equal to your quantity supply. Now, if you see here on the graph, so this is our graph for market equilibrium. So remember our demand curve, it's downward sloping. Much as a green. And then our supply curve, kanang maroon ba or red? It's upward sloping. So how can we identify if we are on equilibrium in the market? So, katong mag-intersect na ang demand and supply. So, as a point, oops, there. It's a point where demand and supply intersect. Okay, kanang na i dot diha. So, we can achieve market equilibrium if our demand is equals to supply. Okay, so delicate siya makita if we graph our demand and supply curve. So how can we get our equilibrium quantitatively? Alright, so remember our demand function, our quantity demanded, this one. So para kang pag full screen and ha.
times weight. Okay, so quantity demanded is equals to A minus BP. So this is here our demand function and then our quantity supplied if supply function is equals to C minus DP where again Q is quantity okay wait I guess na wrong I'm not gonna edit it's supposed to be addition all right, so our supply curve, it's QS equals C plus DP. So the negative, uh, the negative sign here on our demand curve implies the negative relationship or inverse relationship between quantity and price. So as the price increases, quantity demanded decreases. So the supply, the positive sign here okay, implies a positive relationship between price and quantity so as the price increases quantity supplied also increases now going back to our equilibrium uh, to call this equilibrium condition where our quantity demand should be equal to our quantity supplied so so we can say that our market is at equilibrium if a is equals b I mean, A minus BP is equal C plus DP. And then from there, we can get our equilibrium price. Um, if you have noticed sa uh, learning guide 3.1, wala na kong ipa-answer and navigate, do na dito ang compu uh, computation. So it's uh, it's kind of hard, kaya hindi po tayo dito nga uh, activity mang good is na ay quadratic function. So, wala na lang po siya kipakuan, kipansiran, kiparadil mo masamot o ka-confuse. So, basic lang ta, linear lang ta. Okay, so let's have an example. So, this one here was taken sa Learning Guide 3.1. So, let's say we have a demand function of QD is equals to 2000 minus 2P. And our supplied function is QS is equals to 2P plus 1,200. So let's copy this. And then later, I'll come on about the graphs on the movement if our demand or supply will increase and decrease. Image a log. Alright, so computation now sa tanga side ha. So remember our equilibrium condition, our quantity supplied should be equal to quantity demand. So what is our supply here? It's 2P 
plus 1,200 equals to 2,000 minus 2P. So, I'll tell us lang equate. So, oops. Two P plus two P is equals to two thousand minus one thousand two hundred. So two P plus two P equals four. 2000 minus 1 to is 800. So we have to divide it by 4. So 4, 800 divided by 4. I said anyone like Penta Boy. So our P star here, or P star, what we call our equilibrium price. Kalagi putang ng star, just to indicate that we are at our equilibrium. Okay, if we have a star here, so 800 divided by 4. It's 200. Alright guys, can you double check? Compute to sa inyo ang side. Let me know. Okay, karong pupukong compute ani. If correct siya. Just confirm if your equilibrium price is equal to 200. Then let me know. Tama? Agree tanan? Okay. Alright, so this is our equilibrium price. So meaning, given our quant our quantity supplied and quantity demand, we can now determine the price in the market, the equilibrium price, which is 200. Now, how do we get our equilibrium quantity? How to get at the equilibrium quantity? You just have to select it's either on supply function or demand function. So let's uh, choose sa demand. Our QD project bata din nag doodle 2000 minus 2 our P is 200 so I know this is just very basic sa inyo ano kaninga uh, arithmetic katong na magud sa learning guide is nag quadratic magud siya so i do not agree nga eh, mag quadratic at your level even mo mag major in economics so 2 times 200 is 400 Oops. unless you wanted to proceed in taking bs economics sa pag college then we can do that so 2000 minus 400 it's 1600 So this is now our equilibrium quantity. All right, so same menu button if you choose the supply function. So matamata naman na kung sa supply function ta QS plus 2P plus 1, 2. So P is 204 plus 1216. So same answer. So that's how you check on how to get your equilibrium price and your equilibrium quantity. So if you plot this,
that's the pen. <clears throat> so always ang uh, nasa vertical is ang price and then um, quantity ang nasa horizontal. So let's say the so demand and a curve to plot this. So first we have to identify our Q here. So if P is zero, our quantity is 2,000. So let's say na dali 2K. And then if Q is zero, our P is 1,000. So this is our demand curve. Nagyan sinyo gyan sa nakapagkuan? Kuha sa demand curve? Confused? Hello? Ah, wala. Why nyo nag-get? Gyan sa nakapag-plot sa demand curve, sa graph. So, ano eh? Ako na lang gidiretsyo. Now, to get the value of Q. Saan na to? So, sa itong demand curve, to get the value of Q, let's equate P to 0. So, if P is 0, or price is 0, or quantity is 2,000. So, mo itong gidiretsyo na kong 2,000. And then, if Q is 0, our P is... 1,000. So, ibali na ang 2,000. Negative 2,000 equals to negative 2P divided 2. It's 1,000. So, from there, nga na demand curve. And then, sa so to ang supply. So, if Q is 0, it's negative 2P plus 1 to negative 600. So most likely na sa ubos mag-start ang six hundred. So let's say na dali. Ano na lang. Negative six hundred. So rough estimate somewhere here in New Hang. P star and then this is your Q star so that's how you plot your equilibrium alright so that's how you get your market equilibrium quantitatively so remember the condition your supply should be equal to your demand Okay, so linear lang ta, so ayun lang magkahadlok kasi buting alam mo sa learning guide na quadratic so butang wala na akong ipansiran hmm. Question Clear ba? How to derive your equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity Sige, later mag-sigot ta sa shift sa demand and supply. Question? Wala? Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> so, kanisya sa letter A, if you're wondering, complete the table below. So, how to get quantity demand and quantity supply. So, substitute lang yung price here. 
substitute lang price sa demand and supply function and then makuha na din ninyo inyo ang quantity so ano na siya pag answer and then in equilibrium how many pizza will be sold in at what price so mo itong ganiha itong dissolve okay alright next now in the market we also have what we call this equilibrium so in contrast ni siya sa equilibrium so sa equilibrium supply is equal to demand in this equilibrium obviously supply is not equal to demand so it happen if the price is not right it's either it's too low or too high so we have two types of this uh, this equilibrium so we have our surplus and we have our shortage so surplus or we also call it excess supply so the condition to know if we have a surplus if your quantity supplied is greater than your quantity demand so kanisha qs is greater than qd so if you plot this in a graph excess supply or surplus can be found above the equilibrium point so this is your equilibrium point here so surplus can be found above so it means that your supply your quantity supplied here is 16 and then your quantity demand here is 8 now how do you get your surplus e minus as you have to find the difference so 16 minus 8 so you have a surplus of 8 okay so your supply is greater than your quantity demand your quantity supply is greater than quantity supply and that is 8 so that's the surplus Okay, now if the market is experiencing surplus, since we are at, uh, in this condition here, we are at free market, so the price tends to get uh, low or we decrease on price until it will fall back to the equilibrium price. So for example, in a real world situation, let's say, it's the best example, lani. oh, ang face shield, especially in times of pandemic diba if you can remember kato pag start sa uh, pag breakout sa covid-19 dire sa philippines ang face shield ato nga time is uh, ni abot og mga 200 ata per piece so what happened was so nin taas man ang demand sa face shield because of covid so producers og mga businesses daghan kay sila gi-manufacture ng mga face shield then eventually, since daghan naman kayo ang nag-supply of face shield, oh, wala na kayo na malit. Kaya nag-expect man ang supplier or mga businesses na maka-earn sila more profit since mahal ang price. But then, daghan naman kayo ang supply. So what they did is, gilower nila ang price kay para mahalin lang. So today, you can buy na face shield, I think mga 40 or 30 pesos per piece. Okay. So the market will find a way kung based pa ni Adam Smith na invisible hand that controls the market okay. and then it will lower down the price that eventually will come back to the equilibrium price. Okay. So another example, let's say um, agricultural products. If you can remember katong 2018, masigurta siya 2017. Uh, remember nyo itong sa Luzon, katong mga kamatis nga gipanglabay na lang due to oversupply. So that's one of the problem of, uh, in the market, especially sa mga agricultural products because they are perishable goods, meaning dalit lang sila madaot. Now if you happen to have oversupply of a certain agricultural product mga tendency ana is you have to lower your price 
so that you can sell them as soon as possible or if not it's you know it's good as like masayang na lang kaya wala na may mapalit kaya madaot na siya now if uh, if that will happen normally the government will intervene like the government should provide kanang mga say tawag ano nga mga storage materials so that farmers can store their agricultural products that can that can last long okay para ma-avoid na nga lower ang price sa mga agricultural goods because eventually that will hit the farmer so kung gamay lang ang presyo sa gulay meaning gamay lang pud ang kita sa mga farmer and eventually they will stop producing those types of goods kay wala may kita so that's uh, one of the problem in the market which is disequilibrium Right. Next, another problem is shortage or what we call excess in demand. Now, in this situation, quantity demand is greater than quantity supply. So, when a shortage occurs, prices must be raised to restore the market equilibrium. So, if you plot it on a graph, it is under the equilibrium price. So, ganiha. Ang oversupply or surplus sa taas, si shortage naman na sa ubos. The excess demand. So the demand here, the quantity demanded is 16. And then the quantity supplied is 8. So natay shortage na 8. Now again, if we are on a free market, so the invisible hand if the market experiencing shortage, the invisible hand will then raise the price until it reach the equilibrium price. So, naming arang situation. So, let's say, uh, as I go up an example on shortage, uh, let's say sa employment. Alright, so sa number of laborers, especially in the Philippines, that we are, you can say, highly populated ang Philippines especially sa mga urbanized area so meaning more people more labor force but unfortunately gamay lang ang trabaho nga available so natay shortage of work and then natay high demand I mean natay high demand of work shortage ang work and then excess ang labor force so at this uh, at this level here, kaning 8, maolang ni ang ma-offer nga employment sa market. However, ang labor force na to na ay 16. So what is really the government do to avoid shortage is kaning uh, minimum wage rate. So the government normally, this is normally like, impose a minimum wage rate, so that uh, the uh, firms and businesses will employ people. Dili sila magpalower down to prices. Kay pag gamay na ang wage, meaning since the ganon kayo labor force, those people will just get that work mas king gamay ang trabaho. And that will equate to lower income. Okay, example. So, see the table of values here. We have our price, quantity demanded, and quantity supplied. So, if the price is 0 0.5, quantity demand is 22, and then quantity supplied is 0, so we have a shortage of negative 22. So, you minus lang sila. Again, shortage is quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. Surplus is quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. Okay, so that's how you can identify. All right, next. <clears throat> Price control. So these are restrictions okay, that normally the government, uh, where the government intervenes in the market. 
So the purpose for this is to protect the welfare of the consumer and the seller. So we have two types, the price ceilings and the price floor. So when we say price ceiling, that's the maximum price sellers are allowed to charge for a good. Though it states ceiling, so the price ceiling can be found in a shortage na area. So the market price is at 3. However, the government will impose a price lower than the equilibrium price. So the purpose for this price ceiling is to protect the consumer. So let's say the, the equilibrium price is 3. So if the price is at 3 pesos, meaning na ay mga consumer na dili ka afford anang a price. And normally those are consumers na, or no, normally most of them are uh, citizens that cannot afford the equilibrium price. Now for them to afford those types of goods with higher prices, the government Okay, will uh, create a policy that will put the price lower than the equilibrium price okay, para daghanang maka benefit. So they limit the price lower than the equilibrium price. Because remember, in the demand curve, each point of the demand curve represents a consumer. Okay, so there are consumers who are only willing to pay Two, there are also consumers who are also willing to pay three. There are also consumers who is willing to pay four. So if the market equilibrium price is three, so what happened to those consumers who are only willing to pay two? Okay, so dili sila maka join sa market. So dili sila maka benefit sa good. Okay, so another intervention of the government is the price floor. So this here, the government will set a minimum price buyers are required to pay for a good. So for price floor, so it says floor, so it's above the equilibrium price. Okay, so here, the price that is being offered in the market or the market equilibrium price is lower than the price set by the government. So this normally protects uh, the supplier. Okay, so let's say for example na I um, calamity. And just normally in the Philippines, if like calamity, um, greatly affected good is uh, mga farmers or mga agricultural sector. Right? So the government normally put price floor okay, para though gamay lang ang supply sa agricultural products, farmers can still get high profit or revenue to continue their production. So though ang market price is 3 but the government will require them to sell it at a higher price or required to pay at four okay, para ma-protect ang welfare aning mga producers sa market. Okay, question. Wala. Minus. You can turn on your mic if you have question. Okay, dili na ko makita ako ang um, Google Meet if you have some uh, if you have something nagit chat. Okay, so let's proceed. Napako isa i present katong shift sa demand and supply.
All right, clear up my screen. All right. Guys, you can turn on your mic if you have questions. Okay, di ginawa makita ang chat sa Google Meet. Okay, na kawo pinakong PowerPoint. All right. So effect of change in demand is supply on equilibrium price and quantity. So mo niya yung activity for this week. So ako na siyang detailed na ha para mas clear um, explanation. So let's say we have an increase in demand. So what happened to our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity? Okay, so remember the demand will either shift the demand curve, ha? the demand curve will either shift to the left or shift to the right depending on which factor um, that affects the demand curve. So when we say an increase in demand, so it will shift outward or rightward, shift to the right. So from D1, it will shift to D2. So katong mga shifting factors sa demand is katong, what, you can, you can still remember mga factors affecting demand? Anyone daw ba? Maskin isa lang ka-example. Wage, nasi kairo, income, wealth, taste and preferences. So, those are the factors affecting demand. Okay, so if demand curve will shift to the right, or it will increase from D1 to D2, and then our supply curve remain constant. So, what will happen to our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity? So, our equilibrium price will increase from 1 to 2. Okay, so ano yung movement niya? So let's say mataas ang income sa individual. So the demand curve will shift to the right. The price will increase and the quantity demand or the equilibrium price will also increase from Q1 to Q2. Alright, so let's say we have a decrease in demand. So let's say ni gamay ang income due to the pandemic like na layoff or instead of getting a full employment um, part-time na lang so ni baba na iyahang income so the demand of that individual will decrease from D1 to D2 so what will happen is equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity given the supply is constant so P1 will decrease to P2 our Q1 will decrease to Q2 Okay, so ako na siyang state here. So let's say we have an increase in supply. So a firm or a factory, um, they employ a newer technology. So their supply uh, becomes efficient from S1 to S2. So again, same with demand, supply curve will either shift inward or outward. When we say increase, it will shift to the right. So what will happen to our equilibrium price? So the equilibrium price will decrease. However, our equilibrium quantity will increase from Q1 to Q2. Okay, so what are those factors that will shift our supply curve, either inward or outward? Banato tax, subsidies, um, technology number of sellers in the market. So those are the factors that will affect our supply. So let's say we have a decrease in supply from S1 to S2. The price will increase. Then the quantity will decrease. All right, so let's say there's a shift uh, for both demanded supply. So increase in demand and then there's a decrease in supply. For some reason, na ay mga factors na nag-change, na naka-affect on both curves. So there's an increase in demand from D1 to D2. And then decrease in supply from S1 to S2. Our price will increase from P1 to P2. However, our quantity or equilibrium quantity is indeterminate. So 
So, what do you mean when you say indeterminate? Meaning, it's either un unquantifiable or it is unknown. So, we don't know if there's really a change. Or maybe there's a change, but a really slight change that we cannot calculate. Okay, so that uh, that's, what, that's what will happen if your demand will increase and then your supply will decrease. Alright, so in contrast, if the decrease naman, if the demand demand will decrease and then the supply will increase, our equilibrium price will decrease and then same with our equilibrium quantity, it is still indeterminate. Okay. Last but not the least. So if both demand and supply will increase, what will happen to our equilibrium price and quantity? So equilibrium quantity will increase from Q1 to Q2, but our price now is indeterminate. It is unknown or cannot be calculated. But if both demand and supply will decrease, your quantity, um, equilibrium quantity will decrease from Q1 to Q2. The same happened to the price. It is indeterminate. Okay, so much um, clearer niya na representation on the change of demand and supply <clears throat> and what will happen to our equilibrium price and quantity. Question. So I hope makatabang ni nga graph sa inyo activity for this week. But still, if you have any confusions, uh, you can message me anytime. By the way, sa questions katong sa activity 3.3. And yes, I consider the um, COVID uh, situation. Okay, so new analysis. Okay, question. So I think this is the end of my presentation today. Yes? Any question? Sure. Clear ba? So I hope it helps us. But, but again, if you still are confused, you can message me anytime. So here's the attendance link. I'm so sorry to... Uh, took so much of your time. It's, it's already 8.51. Just fill out the attendance and then <clears throat> make sure you submit your activities uh, on time, right? Because... Because uh, we have a, a new memo that we, I mean, some of us are social science, uh, we are only allowed to give one activity per week. So, mugamay na inyong activities, which is good in your part, but for grading purposes, gamay na may kuha ano grado. So, make sure you submit your activity on time and you submit it religiously and then answer it properly. Kay para if you want to maintain your grade, dito rin mo makuha grades. Right. Okay, so thank you again guys for your time. I'll see you again on Maybe the holiday Monday. Oh just day on holiday. So I'll see you on Monday, December seventh. Right? Okay guys. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Ah, yes. Ako itong i-post ka ron after sa kong mga class. Ako pong ikuan sa chat room, ha? Bye-bye.